This summer, I decided to hit the road. My plan was to drive from New York City to Portland to check out bike share in various North American cities. I kicked things off in Pittsburgh, where I sat down with Erin, who works for Healthy Ride. I started off by asking her to describe the bike scene in the Steel City. Uh, in a word, I guess I would say growing. Getting more people on bikes, having biking be more of a, a presence in Pittsburgh only means that it gets more attention, that it becomes more of a priority for adding more infrastructure, and uh, you know, people tend to see it as more of a respected way of traveling. Seeing something like this um, take off that introduces m new people to biking on public roadways uh, is kind of a beautiful thing and, and getting more people out and healthy and having more fun in their daily commute. I had a pretty good visit to Pittsburgh. Next, I headed up to Cleveland. I think that the best thing about bike share is that it brings bike share, or bikes to the masses. You know, I care about getting people out of their cars, which means I don't just care about bikes. I care about buses and I care about trains and I care about walking and I care about people who can't walk and need mobility devices and you know everybody's trip is valid and we need to support as much of that as we can. Cleveland really surprised me and I enjoyed my stay more than anticipated. My tour <laughs> continued as I pushed up into Chicago where I met up with the Divi team. I meet a lot of people like even in Ubers I'm like hey have you tried Divi like do you do you bike and they're like no I have my own and then I find myself giving like a 30 second elevator pitch of like but you have to carry it if it rains if you know if you take Divi you don't have to do that. In the winter it's still for you you can get that last mile, it's still going to be faster and, you know, biking will keep you warm and with the right equipment you can do it and no, you don't have to have all the spandex. And I think that's a net win overall. Minneapolis was another good cycling city that I've wanted to visit for quite some time. They too have one of the largest and longest running bike share systems called Nice Ride. I sat down with Michelle from Nice Ride who gave me the rundown. The stories that kind of make me tear up a little bit are the ones where people have been, like me, off of a bike for a long time. They get back on the bike and the first words they say to me are, that was fun, I feel like a kid again. And uh, that's a pretty neat gift that a form of transportation can give you. Next, I made my way south into Tennessee, where I got to see the new V-Cycle fleet of bikes. On my wish list is definitely more bike friendly infrastructure, more pedestrian friendly infrastructure and um, if I had another wish probably also um, expanded uh, public transit. Memphis was probably the third place I hit up that also had scooters, which I definitely saw a lot of people riding, but more on that later. So I pushed forward and made my way to New Orleans where I chatted with Destiny who works for the city's blue bike program. We have physical docks located throughout the city where people can go, they know they're, where the dock is, they know there's gonna be bikes there. But because each of our bikes also has its own U-bar, you can lock it up almost anywhere you lock a personal bike. You know, this is a city where there's always something going on. It's a city of characters. Uh, there's no place like it. Continuing on, I made my way out to San Francisco where I chatted with the Motivate team at Ford Go Bike. So really trying to build a better system in the Bay Area has been being present in the community as much as possible and, and helping out with what their priorities are, not just assuming that bike share is the most important thing to them. Because it might not be. And you're just one tiny part of the puzzle and being receptive to that is really helpful in terms of getting somewhere in the permitting process. San Francisco is also the home of Jump, which is currently my bike share ride of choice. I wrapped up my road trip by chatting with one of the Jump associates at a conference in Portland. Uh, typically bike share trips are around a mile, a mile and a half, and we're seeing people ride 2.6 miles on average on Jump bikes, and um, really just expands the amount of people who are even interested in riding bikes in the first place, because it's an electric bike. I thought that I made it to the end of my journey, but I soon came to the realization that traditional bike share wasn't the story of the year. So I went back to California to spend some time with someone who recently gave charging scooters a shot. Coming right around the corner here. Should be right around here. There it is, right over here. Mike is a working professional with a good day job, but he also drives part-time for various rideshare and delivery services. 
I wanted to try it because of the newness. I wanted to be one of the early adopters, so I knew the competition was low. I thought the pay was fair. The availability of the scooters, there's a decent amount for me to uh, gather a lot in a short amount of time, not driving a lot of miles, all those things combined. I wanted to give it a try. Uh, the majority of scooters go live at 9 p.m. every night. You're out there at 9 p.m., you're in a high density area, and then you grab as many scooters as your cap is, right? <laughs> So you got all your scooters, you come home, uh, you have some kind of charging setup like we have here. Uh, you charge them and they will take about four to six hours to fully charge. The next part is serving the fully charged scooters in the morning by using the app, which shows designated drop points and the number of scooters you can serve at each spot. So I've been charging uh, Lime scooters for a couple of months now here in San Diego. It really did it pretty frequently in August. Now it's November. I've been doing it less and uh, there's been some changes in the market as far as pricing. It really doesn't work for me, but uh, you really need to look at your schedule, see if it works for you, look at the pricing if you decide that you want to be a juicer. So that's it. Thanks for coming along for the ride.